Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here in Palo Alto, live streaming theCUBE. SuperCloud 7, this is our seventh SuperCloud. This one is getting ready for the next data platform. We're launching the survey of all surveys. It's the mother of all surveys, the next data platform survey with theCUBE Research and ETR. We've been unpacking it, all the data around Snowflake and Databricks as a proxy to give us a read for what's happening in the data platform market. We're here for the analyst angle two, session two here. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE, Rob Stretch here from theCUBE Research, Sanjay Mohan, CUBE Collective, and Sarjit Joel, CUBE Collective, all analysts here. Let's analyze. Guys, the survey data is out. The thesis is that the platform shift and market shift's happening. The data analytics will still hang around. It's a rising tide. The TAM's getting bigger. Plenty of places to play, but the products are changing. And the Snowflake customers are saying, I like Databricks for that. And the Snowflake customers like Snowflake for other workloads. So mm -hmm. you're seeing kind of, I won't say jump ball, but loyalty amongst the platforms but yet focus on functionality. Seems to be the workload, seems to be. What's your analysis, Rob? Start with you. Yeah, I, I think that it's, data has gravity, as Ali just said a you know, few minutes ago, but I, I think also it has affinity. And I, I think people aren't building Uber, they're not Uber, not everybody's Uber, where they're going to build one massive app and one massive data app. What they're building is several apps, and those apps are coming together as part of an ecosystem. Same same way that AI is coming together with agents and you know collections of agents that are now uh, really coming together to solve problems and be more like a team of agents. So I, I think, again, when you start to look at it, I think Databricks has been really excelling in the AI space with the data science crews, and I think you also see that Snowflake has always been in the BI analytics realm. I think. There is some crossover between the two, more so than there ever has been. Uh, and we see that in the data where 81% are using Snowflake for uh, their BI analytics and data warehousing storage. But you have 61% of the people who responded were also using Databricks for that. And then you see the same thing happen when you start to look at things such as uh, ETL and transformation, 61% are using Snowflake, 68% are using uh, Databricks. So I think there are data apps being built on both platforms for different use cases and different functions. Yeah, and Ali Gatsi likes to brag, especially on theCUBE, around, hey, we're getting a bulk of the customers to come over, but that's natural. They're going to use Databricks for certain workloads. Mm -hmm. It's not getting the bulk of the, right. it's not a rip and replace, it's a shared Correct. account. Correct. So they're getting a, a share of wallet and share of market right. share, but it's a different feature, right. Sanji. So that's his point. Yeah. Hey, Snowflake checks the box on analytics. Right, so when Snowflake first came out, it got a lot of undue credit, if I may, for separation of uh, compute and store for the database world. But did it really uh, uh, disaggregate it? Yes, you could pay separately for compute and store, but it was all bundled together. You couldn't buy Snowflake compute and some of the storage. Now with the table formats, that game has changed. So to Ali's point, the data has gravity, yes. You can have one copy of data, never have to move it, but you can change your compute engines now. So now if, if, I, if I can build reports and dashboards very easily in Snowflake with amazing user experience, great. But if I want to do AI ML, maybe I should use Databricks. If I want to do my data cleansing and data prep, I, I should use Apache Spark. Yeah. So same storage, <laughs> unified, st structured and unstructured, no, not making copies of data and moving it around, but changing the computer. It's engine. interesting, I was watching F1 with my son this weekend, and, and you know, there's always strategic intent and decision. Do I change the tires? Do I run on soft yeah. tires? And you, know, they, and you watch the rate, different approaches. I think the Snowflake in Databricks is going to be a master class in you know, um, case study, competitive strategy, because look what Databricks is doing. They're saying, taking the control point away, mm -hmm. they're shifting the field on, snow, on Snowflake. Yeah. And look at Unity. Unity shifts the point of control away from the DBMS, which where they tied their compute yeah. value to, to the catalog for governance. So the same, we're freeing the data up, we're open sourcing yes. everything, your move. Right. Snowflake. Yeah. But, but Snowflake, well, I don't have to move. We're the number yeah. one player in the market. Correct. So very interesting. Now, when do they yeah. not move? This is now, now you're seeing the results of that. Right. So because we used to do these very expensive migration projects, Teradata to Snowflake and all that. Now you don't have to do it. If your, if your data is in open 
format, format yeah. why do you need to move your data from one platform to another platform? So, and, and by making these open table formats, my opinion is that it benefits and it hurts yeah. both Snowflake and Databricks together. So they'll both be successful or they'll both not be successful. So it's not one or the other. Well, the thing now is that I think that might change. If you look at the survey data and yeah. what Ali was saying, very low single digits of I'm leaving any platform. Correct. Loyalty for both platforms is high. Yes. So the brilliance of Databricks is right. not only is a competitive strategy in the of Snowflake, they're instantly number two right. in a massive growing TAM, Rob. So yeah. what came out of the survey is BigQuery, Google, yep. Is getting yes, attention. That was Azure, nice. yeah. and yeah. Amazon, yeah. and hyperscalers right. came up as yeah. having chops. So 36% thought that they're the best AI shop. Well, I mean, yeah. we we were at Amazon just with you uh, <laughs> a, a couple of weeks ago, and and I think again, you know, it, it's not that surprising. I mean, but I, I believe the open data formats, right, will benefit hyperscalers more than these two vendors we talk we are talking about time and again. I think they they were relevant. Uh, they will stay relevant for, for some time to come, but tell me any database company which, or database related company which survived you know, on their own for a long time. They will not survive on their own for a long time. I think they will be gulped by one of these other vendors yeah. and or they will slowly die. I think that's a great point. Now we're seeing yeah. that's the platform shift. Yeah. Market shift is where the money will come in. That's where the buyers will shift to. Product shift is things like MongoDB. They're trying to vectorize. Do they? How do they compete with this when everyone's decoupling off the DBMS and moving the point of control to the catalog? And a minor point is uh, I want to make is that the, the consumption you have to look at the personas of the companies, not the personas at a company, but w within the companies there are ISVs, there are enterprises. In the enterprises, there are top tier enterprises. They act like ISVs, so their demand, their needs are different. They have a lot of chops in house. They can. Uh, consume open formats and whatnot, but but if, as you go lower, people are looking for abstracted solutions, abstraction, they, yeah. they value abstraction, and, and that's where uh, Snowflake and uh, Databricks kind of yeah. companies uh, can make a difference, but, I believe. And I, and I also think that one of the things I've seen is, and again, over the last few weeks, it's been interesting, and we had Nutanix on earlier, and then you have all of the people with their super pods coming out, the GDX super pods and things of that nature, like Dell has had theirs that, you know, bringing PowerStore and PowerFlex and all of that. When you start to look at how that on-prem data is now being cloudified yeah. so that the data can move to the cloud, so you can have copies of the data up there, where then I can put it in open table mm -hmm. formats and join it with my DBMS and engine. I think that to me is the future of where, because I think everybody got really paranoid about copies of data. And I think that this is why governance is going to be like the, yeah. the number one understanding where your data is, the, what, what is the lineage of it, how did it get there? Mm -hmm. And those co different control planes is making things even more complicated but it's also making it somewhat more efficient in some ways because you can use different processing power. Another thing is that we tend to sort of conflate the or, or intermingle the data intelligence with application. And they are two different things in my, my view. The application is still the king, I believe. After application produces the data, now you want to look at the dashboards and performance of the company mm -hmm. and or a race car or you name it, right? And you can call those dashboards as, as applications as well, but but I think the applications are what 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 the applications are everything. Yeah, I so, think yeah. the intelligence applications to your point has to be intelligent. That exactly. means the data has got to be intelligent <laughs> under yes. the covers. So some, again, that's the shift from yeah. analytics to platforms. Exactly. And, these and these two vendors. Uh, Entered through the back door, you know they were coming from the intelligence and to the to the so transactional there, there systems. Companies like you know uh, one of one of very uh, fast rising companies, Plotly. Plotly has this whole idea that these appli these dashboards are now interactive and collaborative, and they call it data applications. Yeah. So that's one term, yeah. and uh, in my world, I've called it data products. So, so it's just different. Well, Vast used my our, my our term on the cube called the data operating system. We've been saying that for over years. Right. They actually called the the AI operating system for Vast. Right. Yeah. But Rob, you, I thought Rob, you guys bring up a good point. His his point about the, this trend is here: open data formats is driving the landscape. 
governance layer is shifting, and that's enabling the AI intelligent data applications. Mm. That's the, the trajectory. Now, the profile of the survey, the mother of all surveys, the next data platform survey that the Cube Research just put out, the, the demographics are interesting, okay? It's a shared survey of customers that have both Snowflake and Databricks, mm. okay? 96% of respondents are deeply involved in data platform decision making, okay? And also highlighted that the Synapse is in there, Redshift, BigQuery and others, even SQL Server and Oracle and MongoDB. Although MongoDB's got their own challenges to your point, it's RG about being a database. Interesting, security and governance emerge as critical factors in platform decision making with 86% reflecting, prioritizing that aspect. So, okay, two big names on the front edge of the data, next data platform evolution, revolution, 96% are platform decisions, security and governance. This isn't the department that's doing BI anymore, guys. Mm. Yeah. Reaction to that. You, obviously, do you agree? I mean, you would probably agree. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you I, pro, I, I, pro I mean, I helped, <laughs> I helped write the survey, so I mean, yeah. I, 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 but it wasn't a bias. No, it was, it was, it was no, it definitely didn't. I mean, in, in fact, some of yeah. the some of the things where uh, we looked at like decrease in use of Unity Catalog and things of that nature, and there was no decrease. It was we're going to either use it, we're unlikely to change our use of Unity Catalog. Uh, yeah or we plan to increase our use, what was kind of the way. And I, I think what was interesting is exactly that, is that there's use cases into your data products comment. I, I think what, and we have uh, Fivetran and Informatica coming up next, where when you start to look at data products and how they're built and data features and what those look like, and then data apps with, you know, if you go and look at Uber, you know, Uber is one of those things that really has multiple data apps mm. built into it. And data products could be revenue or it could be time, time to delivering, uh, you know, your food to you or something like that for Uber Eats or something like that. And when you start to look at it, I think what's been interesting and what I'm really interested to see is how these organizations take that, because you were going down the persona route and yeah. take that and who owns what is a data product? Because what's going to happen is you have these data products, you also have these agents, these AI agents, they're going to play together. And you could, you could almost say that a, a data, a, or, you know, an AI agent is a data product hmm. in a way. And I, I think it it's just- data product. Oh, I, I, it's also I, an app. That, this that's is, my definition. Yeah. AI agent is a data product. So the way I, I say it is, you have a unified storage layer, it's got structured and unstructured, you're not having separate storage. Uh, on top, you've got compute, which is disaggregated. Now, we talked about all the compute engines, but you've got Starburst, Trino, Dremio, uh, Pandas, yep. Spark, you've got all of that. But one of the compute engines is, we talked earlier is LLM. And that yeah. LLM is now driving more of the semantic search kind of applications. So AI agents are sitting on, so the AI, like conversational, chatbots, assistants, co-pilots are sitting on top of LLM. Reports, dashboards, machine learning, uh, algorithms, all are sitting on top of the rest of compute. They're all data products on top. Do you agree that the platform shift, because it's going to change the persona, certainly, yeah. but, but they're not, the personas aren't going anywhere. They're no, still going to hang correct. around. It's just it's yeah. getting bigger, but the platform yeah. puts emphasis on the criticality Yes. of the foundational nature of yes. the shift. Increases the urgency. You've been around the block. What's yep. your take on this? Give, give us your, your... So, so for example, why is data quality so hot these days? It's because we have elevated how bad data will drive havoc in your company. So that's what Gen AI has done. The problem has not changed because what used to happen in the past, we all know the, how the story played out. The night before the SEC report need to be filed, you know, the CFO and his or her team sat all night in Excel. They had all these expensive SAPs and Salesforce and Oracle ERP, and they fixed the numbers. Sounds like our Excel. team, in Google Docs, we have Salesforce. Yes, <laughs> but now the volume of data, the velocity is yeah. so high, and you, you're putting Gen AI, yeah. AI agents that are autonomously going to reason and kick off an action. Imagine the, the chaos we can cause with bad data. Yeah. And as Ali was saying, the iPhone apps was a good example, flashlight to real, 
Okay. Yeah, I, I think Zamek said that earlier the, the catalog plus plus model, I think it has some legs, that idea has some legs, but it will take a long time to, to be a reality. Um, I have worked in the B2B sort of domains like B2B e-commerce mm -hmm. and all that in, in, in dot com days. Um, and, and even after that, working at an ERP company, PeopleSoft and so forth, right? So data, of course, is, is very important, but by industry, if you if you take a look at the taxonomy of the industries, auto industry has their own taxonomy of parts, you know, with what car has what parts and what not. E-commerce overall has different taxonomy. Our IT world has SIM model, CIM, right? Common information model for IT, ITOL, mm -hmm. ITSM. So all those, I think all those, all, all those taxonomies can sit in small language models, and that's data, mm -hmm. right? And that data was sitting in some relational database earlier, but now they can be sitting in the small language models, and a combination of those small language models will be woven into our next gen of applications. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. Of course, the transactional data will sit in the transactional databases, mostly SQL still, yeah. uh, but other data, which is multi-modality of the data, if you will, that will sit in different formats and we will be using LLMs you know, and other means. Before this uh, episode, we had Dipti uh, Borkar from Microsoft and she used to talk about operation database and I kind of blurted out that, yeah, operation databases get no love. Yeah. <laughs> because they are the workhorse. Yes. But all the attention is focused on analytics, like the, the table formats is all analytics, but the, Hard work is being done by the operation. Another another aspect, very important aspect, is that is that data has life span. In the in in the in, as data ages, it loses value. But some data loses value less than other data. You know, some data is stale, like within seconds. Some data is stale after mm -hmm. a month, right? So that that demarcation of time wise, what data uh, loses how much value when? I think that will determine what goes into the large language models and what stays in, into the traditional databases. So, so because data is constantly changing, so we are now, so first we had prompt the model, then we had prompt with RAG, which is actually yeah. refining the prompt, but still prompt engineering. Right. Then we have fine tuning, fine -tuning. then we have training of small models. None of these are going to go away. Yeah, they're going to in actually get They'll in all be used in conjunction. So if the data is changing rapidly, you're not going to be training a small language model <laughs> all, the time. all the time. So you would train it frequently, but then you would use RAG in combination. And right, and that's how it becomes smarter right, as well. Yeah. Guys, we're going to leave it there, but final question goes to Rob, the co-author of the mother of all surveys, <laughs> Next Data Platform. When you did, when you authored the, the survey, the results were pretty awesome, by yeah. the way, great job. Yeah. Were you surprised? What was the big takeaway from you? What was, did it blow you away? Did it get what you expected? What was the big takeaway from I, the, I, the I, author of the survey? So, so working with ETR and the way that they actually took the bias out of it, which was fantastic. The, the guys over there do awesome work. Uh, but when you started to look at how much of the on-premise and hybrid was still out there. It, I was, it actually warmed my heart because I thought that the results would be high, that 51% of people would use things like SQL still over the next year because there's so much data still on-premise that has to be unlocked yeah. for the true promise of AI to really get there. Well, let's do another analyst angle. After this event, you want to do a quick comment on that? Yeah, so I, just, I, I don't want to comment on Rob. I want to comment on a proposal I have for the Cube, <laughs> Super okay. Cloud 8. Yes. Should in, so this survey was all Snowflake, Databricks, Hyperscalers. Yep. Super Cloud 8 should be all the non-traditional data players who are very fast going to jump into the space. Companies like OpenAI, because they bought Rockset, NVIDIA moving up from GPUs and CUDA, Palantir, uh, uh, Snowflake, all these companies that we don't think right now play in this data platform space. Yeah. Well, that could be the survey of all surveys. In Super Cloud 8, we're going to do a monster survey. <laughs> <laughs> Super survey. <laughs> yes. Sounds like a great idea. By the way, again, just the beginning, we're getting some data, we see, we see things, yep. the L signs are there, the platform shift is happening, it's coming to the data platform level, the next data platform here at Super Cloud 7. More after this short break. Thank you.